Hello everybody, for those of you who are normal viewers of my channel, I'm sorry this may seem a little bit weird that I'm doing a Dancing with the Stars commentary, but uh, I'm actually doing this for Gabe Goodman09, who is another YouTube reviewer. He reviews uh, Dancing with the Stars mostly every week, um, but he is out for the next two weeks and he very kindly asked me to step in for him and I said that I would. So this is mainly for uh, the Gabe Goodman09 viewers and fans out there. So, you know, I'm gonna do my best I've never done a Dancing with the Stars commentary before. I do have a dance background, not in ballroom necessarily, but you know, I am, I think it gives me a little bit of a leg up. I'm able to see technique a little bit more than say the average person. So, you know, I'm just gonna do my best. I hope I make you proud, Gabe. I'd say overall, this episode was really great. I think everybody brought their A game for the most part. Almost everybody improved and that's very important, especially now that we're getting to, you know, really close to the end of the show. And I'm so glad that they didn't have all those gimmicks. It's like this whole season, it's been about props and these stupid skits and backup dancers. And I don't, we don't need anything. I just want to see the stripped down traditional raw dance and I think that's what we got. None of the stars could really be covered up by any distractions or anything like that and that's perfect. We're getting to the point where we really need to see you know what separates the people who deserve to be there from the people that don't. I'm just gonna go in order from how uh, the show progressed. We started out seeing Alfonso and Whitney and off, let's face it, Alfonso Rivero is just, I mean, he is the most talented dancer naturally. Um, you know, he, he and he's also just a great performer. He does have a dance background, so that does help him quite a bit. But he just has a flair for, he's got a great personality, flair for comedic timing. And I thought he did a really good job. He surprised me, actually. He did a foxtrot, and it was very wonderful. It, it you know, as I said, no gimmicks, no props. It was just good old-fashioned dancing, very old Hollywood glamour, fantastic song, reminded me a lot of the Fred and Ginger era. And, um, you know, I always thought about Alfonso, that he is great doing solos and like side by side with Whitney because that's, you know, what he's comfortable in. But uh, this was the first time that he actually looked like he was at ease doing a traditional ballroom dance. You know, he doesn't have that very relaxed hold. He always felt kind of awkward and kind of stiff because that wasn't his element. Here he improved tremendously, I thought. So yeah, he, he did a great job there. I loved his trio dance, his pasa doble. He was able to really keep that those traditional, those round shapes that you need in the pasa doble, but there was that nice hip hop flair, which you know he's so good at. So they were able to keep that traditional style, but have that, you know, a little bit of that edge to it. Now, the song was horrible. I'm sorry, I'm not a little John fan. I know that's shocking to a lot of you, but I am not. So, you know, they did the best that they could. And honestly, I think they absolutely deserve those tins. And then you have Tommy and Peta and, of course, there always has to be that stock character on Dancing with the Stars, and that's always the person that doesn't really deserve to be there, but they're the fan favorite, and they keep, you know, entertaining no matter what, and that is Tommy this season. I don't think he's gonna make it to the top three, but, you know, he's fun to watch, and, you know, I like his personality just like everybody else. He's that mellow, kind of very funny, uh, pot-smoking hippie, a man after my own heart, and, you know, I think it really does come across in his dancing. I thought his waltz was, was lovely. It was very, it was a proper, you know, waltz, a proper Viennese waltz. He had a lovely hold and, you know, continuous movement, you know, and flow, which I, I wasn't expecting from him. Now, once he stepped away from Pita, you know, things got a little bit shaky. He kind of, you know, slipped and didn't know exactly what he was doing. But I would say in hold, I, I was very impressed. And I think, you know, he deserved those scores. And I just have to say on a side note, what was up with Lynn tonight? It's like, this is the first time where he was giving higher scores than all the other judges. So I'm just, I don't know what's up with him. Maybe he's getting laid a lot or he's smoking some very, very good marijuana, but whatever it is, it was kind of nice to see this more laid back Lynn Goodman. And then there was his trio dance, which <laughs> I'm sorry, it was the funniest thing I have seen all day. I mean, it just made me laugh. I smiled the whole time. It was perfect because, you know, the first dance, they tried to be more traditional. This one, they were like, you know what, we're just gonna stick to the Tommy Chong we wanna see. And that's what it was, just like this kind of old guy with these hot young uh, girls dancing with him. And it was just great entertainment value. Was there much samba there? No, I mean, almost none, but you know, I mean, again, he's a crowd pleaser and that's a stereotype in Dancing with the Stars and I can't say that I'm tired of it. Honestly, I'd prefer to watch him over, say, Leah and Artem. And that's my segue into Leah and Artem's dancing tonight. 
you know, I mean, she's obviously a better dancer than Tommy is, but there's just something about her that just rubs me the wrong way. I, I don't think that this couple is very interesting. I, I feel as though, you know, the producers of the show are trying to create a certain type of persona with her and it's just not coming off well to the audience. You know, they're making her seem like she's this very confident, kind of sexy cougar. And that does not translate well to the dance floor. I mean, she may act like that, and I say act, I mean, it seems very superficial on um, the packages that play before the dances, but that just does not translate very well into the dances. She always seems very kind of unsure and unconfident and, um, you know, she does have that wonderful ballet background and it's like she can never quite get rid of it. And to me, that's what Dancing with the Stars is about. It's about growing and, you know, stepping outside of your comfort zone and doing something that is very different. And I don't feel like she's ever quite, you know, pushed through to that level. I mean, you can see it here and there, especially in this samba. I actually thought this was one of her better dances. You know, as Julianne said, um, you know, she at moments had that very cat-like kind of sexy feel to it and, and she was really letting loose, but then other times she's very placey. She's very balletic. And I know that's a very difficult habit to break, but I feel like, you know, they've been doing it for so long by now. I, I, I wanted to see more growth from her. And I felt the same way about her uh, trio dance. I know the judges really, really liked it, you know, I didn't think it was that great. I mean, if you're gonna have a, I'm sorry, like they had Black Betty as a song. I love me some Black Betty. That's a great song, but I don't feel like she quite owned up to it. And she's supposed to be the focal point with these two guys. And I didn't feel like she really owned it. It was better than her first dance. She was able to get more into the ground and really sink into it and and feel that like dynamic uh, quality that you're supposed to have in the Paso Doble. But again, it just didn't quite do it for me. She just wasn't, she wasn't what I was hoping she would be from the beginning. I think it was Carrie Ann that said that um, Bethany and Derek, Bethany is doing all the things that Leah isn't. You know, uh, Bethany started out as this kind of shy girl that nobody really knew, you know, outside of say YouTube, but she's really come into her own and, and she's found a lot about who she is through the dancing. And I feel like that's what Derek is able to bring out in his partners. You know, he doesn't just want to make them better dancers. He wants to see the person and in, he wants to allow them to shine. And that's a really great thing. And you can really see her growing, you know, as again, not only as a dancer, but as a person as well. And we like to see that journey as viewers. With this Viennese waltz, I think that that just added another layer. I love the fact that they're going for a story, you know, the idea of heartbreak and vulnerability. Um, and it was, it was lovely. I mean, she did have wonderful flow and, and wonderful posture in the way that she was able to carry herself. And, you know, I enjoyed it. Was it, you know, tin worthy? No, I think, you know, they were right in giving her nines, but, you know, she did a, a very good job. And it was a really big juxtaposition between that and her Argentine tango. The Argentine tango, I enjoyed just, you know, as a viewer, it was very dynamic. It was powerful, it, very um, bombastic, but, and this is not Derek or Tony or Bethany's fault necessarily. I think it was the, the song choice. It wasn't right, at least to me, for an Argentine tango. When I think Argentine tango, yes, it does need to have that, that pop and that sharpness in terms of like the gauchos, the hooks that they do and the posture, but there's also this, you know, this sleekness, the sophistication, the sexiness, and I don't feel like you can really get that with a song like that, but they did the best that they could. Um, I feel as though, you know, there were times that her technique could have been a little bit better. I mean, you know, because you've got three people dancing and you're going from one person to the other. I know Lynn said that he thought that it was seamless. I didn't think so, actually. I felt as though I, I could see her really working to get into those positions. And even though she needs to be this strong uh, character for the performance, there were times that she kind of got out of it. So, you know, while I did enjoy it, I didn't think it was her best. And then there's uh, Sadie and Mark, which I am a huge Mark fan, so yeah, I'm gonna throw that out there. But uh, I, I love this couple. I think that these two have wonderful chemistry. They've got this kind of very uh, zany energy about them. And uh, I, I think that they bring kind of this youthful exuberance to the show. And plus Mark is very creative. He likes to go outside of the box and, and that's good. I think that suits uh, Sadie very well. And um, with their jive this time, they decided to go a little bit different and it was an ambitious routine. Um, maybe a little bit too ambitious. I don't know if it paid off completely, but 
I actually really applaud them for, for going there because that was a difficult jive. I mean, it really was, you know, kind of, it did look almost as though they were really competing. It was nice to see that Mark was saying, you know, I want to prove that Sadie can really dance and they're not going to hide behind this showmanship. As much as I like, you know, the zombie dance and, and all of that, they really tried to go for the, the technique of it. And um, because you do need both, honestly, to win the competition, at least in my opinion. Um, and, you know, she did her best to keep up. She couldn't quite keep up with Mark, but she did her best. Now, I had a real issue with Carrie Ann on this one. She was saying, you know, like, oh my gosh, I, I like when you do all the crazy choreography, Mark. Well, I want to see that. And I was like, woman, you're the one who criticized him and Sadie for doing the zombie dance. She's like, oh no, it was too much, it, it, you know, all this stuff. And she did the same thing with Mark and Chelsea back in season whatever on their jive and, and on this and that. So like, that was the most hypocritical comment. The foxtrot they did, I thought was fantastic. It was everything I wanted to see from Sadie. You know, she's a very tall girl, so whenever, you know, you don't completely extend your legs or anything like that, it really shows. But here, you know, she used her limbs to her advantage, sorry. You know, she had, you know, really long extended arms and all of that. It was cheeky, it was sassy, it was elegant and beautiful kind of Ginger Rogers inspired outfits, which I loved. And Honestly, I think Mark had a real challenge here because first of all, you know, he was dancing with Emma and Sadie and I mean, it's it's hard if you are a non-dancer to go up against a professional, you are gonna stick out. So the fact that they were able to choreograph it in a way that, you know, they showed off Sadie's assets was fantastic. And also when I heard that they were doing a foxtrot for the trio, I thought, well, how is that gonna work? Because, you know, he's, you know, you need to have that hold, and that's what's so important about the Foxtrot. And I love the way that Mark was able to, you know, like have Emma and Sadie, and they would kind of, you know, switch hold, and it was very seamless. And I, I thought it was very cool the way that they did that. And um, yeah, I thought that was a great recovery from their jive, and I totally agree. I thought they deserved tens. And then we have Janelle and Val, who, you know, I'm a little bit on the fence about. I can't say that they're my favorite couple to watch. I, I do enjoy them and I think they're very strong, but there's just something about Val and his partners. I love Val, but they're always, I guess it's the producers or whatever, they're always trying to force this, this showmance. And I don't think it needs that. Like with this one, I think Janelle is, is cool. You know, she's feisty. I love fe a feisty girl. And you know, she is a very good dancer. You can definitely see it. And she's she's got that kind of that, that presence about her, um, that star quality. But I, th for some reason, I don't feel the chemistry between them. Even, I mean, I guess normally I wouldn't mind so much, but the fact that they're really trying to force it with them, you know, trying to see if they're dating, are they gonna kiss, whatever, all that crap. It, it, I, I don't feel that, that sizzle, that, that spiciness about them that I did with, you know, maybe Val and Kelly Monaco back in the All-Star season. That really worked for me. I'll just say I don't see them winning. I don't know why. I just, for some reason, I don't think that the audience is necessarily, necessarily going to be behind her. Um, I don't know if she's going to get the viewer votes, but you know, I've been wrong before. But that quick step was a wowzer. It was just so, I, you couldn't take your eyes off it for a second. There was so much going on in it. It was tight, it was fast, it was slick. And you know, her hold was perfect and so many intricate steps. I mean, that looked almost like, you know, on the level of a professional routine, which I, I commend her and Val, you know, for the choreography. Um, and you know, unfortunately that was that little slip up and I, I know that uh, Val said it was his fault. I couldn't really uh, tell, but I mean, other than that, it was perfect. And uh, again, that was another one where there was a major juxtapos juxtaposition between that and the um, performance that she did um, later on, the, uh, the trio dance. I thought that was really great. She really owned that performance. My eyes were on her the entire time. Uh, the, the routine did feel very inspired by uh, that routine that the samba that Sean Johnson, Derek Cuff, and Mark Ballas did, the trio dance that they did in the All-Star season. It was, it was a lot like that. And, um, you know, she did hit some beautiful positions, especially at the end. I thought that was very cool, very creative. It was more about the performance than it was about the technique and the actual dance, but you know, they did a really good job. Yeah, I mean, really, I think the whole night was was really great. And honestly, I, I wasn't surprised by Leah and Artem uh, getting eliminated. And as I said before, I know that she's a better dancer than say Tommy Ch Chong in it, but I like watching Tom, Tommy and Peter more. They really give off more entertainment than she does. I feel like, uh, 
Leah was just starting to become more and more stale throughout and she wasn't growing um, and again that's to me that's what this show is about finding your confidence and being able to grow but anyway I was pleasantly surprised by this episode I'm excited for the semifinals next week so thank you all for listening uh, if you're my old viewers or new viewers of you know fans from Gabe Goodman 09 um, yeah I guess I'll see you all next week catch you later